What's up, guys? Welcome to the Stats Free Sports Channel. Here to bring you my game reaction to the Saints defeating the Cowboys 44 19 in a matchup that was not close at all. Let's get into it, guys. So, as a Falcons fan, as a fellow NFC South participant, I'm very nervous, I'm alarmed, and I am shocked by the way the Saints started the season off so far this, this season. Last week, they beat the Panthers, as we all know, who's the worst team in the league, so that's no shock there. You know, at least now, last week's kind of shocking because they put so much money into the offensive line. You can watch my reaction to that game as uh, well. You know, I did the Saints-Panthers reaction. But to, for them to beat the Cowboys, who I thought was a, a was a way, as we all probably thought, was a way better, way tougher matchup, was definitely, you know, alarming as a fellow NFC South participant. You know, the, the Saints have a good team. And I said that during the offseason. I, I knew their defense would be strong, but I just couldn't go in and trust their car. I had no fear of them. And looking like so far, my read has been way off. I thought my Falcons would have beat the Steelers. We lost that game. And looking like the Saints will be, you know, they're going to be a, a contender as the year goes on. You know, hopefully they can stay healthy. They'll get my Sean Lattimore back, their star cornerback back. But as of right now, through two games, so far so good. Alvin Kamara looking like a stud that we all knew him to be. Last year, kind of an off year, down year. You know, dealt with, um, I believe that the suspension last year for the incident happened in Vegas. A couple games suspension, if I'm not mistaken. But just an off year for for New Orleans Saints. But this year, they're back, prime, ready to go. Kamara, 20, uh, 20 carries, 115 yards with three touchdowns. Another touchdown came in the air off that uh, screen pass. Rashid Shaheed, speedster from last year, broke out last year. And when I did my breakout list, I didn't mention him this year. You know, he, he kind of broke out last year. But so far, through the first two games, he's looking on. He's looking crazy. He's looking crazy, man. Uh, he's a deep ball monster. And he beat the uh, – I think he was double cover. He, he Either double cover or he had, you know, a man-on-man -man coverage plus the safety help over top. And it didn't matter. None of that mattered. Rashid Shaheed. Looked very good through the first two games. Chris Olave came alive today. Still no touchdown, but four catches for 81 yards. And that defense for the Saints shut down shut down that that run game. I know. And CD had uh, a pretty good game. Seven targets, four catches, 90 yards. But overall, you know, they held they held the Cowboys in check pretty much all day long. Now going to the Cowboys. Um, not bounce back to the Saints a little bit later, but going to the Cowboys now. Dak looked okay. You know, that Saints defense was humming all, all the way around. A pass rush was getting to him. He threw two interceptions, uh, 27 attempts, excuse me, 27 completions, 39 attempts, uh, two picks, one touchdown. You know, it, it's tough. It's tough when you have no, no good run game. That's why a lot of Cowboys fans, just people in general who watch the Cowboys say, hey, they need a running back to offset, you know, and have a better balance to their offense. And we see that now. You know, they don't really have a true, true number one back. That's why a lot of people wanted Jonathan Brooks, the rookie from Texas, who's now with the Panthers. People wanted anybody, you know, make a trade for Damian Pierce from the Texans. But they decided to hold firm. They brought back Zeke. They brought in Dalvin Cook. Uh, they still have Rico Dowdle, but nothing really, you know, uh, shaking in that running back room for the Cowboys. So, you know, and they showed today in a matchup like this when you can shut down at their run game or just bring pressure and you had no elite running back or above average running back to offset the pressure or a good defensive line, it just shows, you know, and today uh, was a representation of, of uh, that. Going to the receiving room for the Cowboys, we see C.D. Lamb, as I said earlier, four catches, 90 yards, one touchdown, good day by C.D. Lamb. Then my guy, Jalen Tolbert, had a pretty good day, six catches, 82 yards. I'm happy to see that happen. You know, if you watch my channel and see my old video I did right before the season started, it was a... Um, a video pertaining to uh, 10 players who I believe will be breakout candidates. And, I, and uh, Jalen Tober was on that, that, that list from last year. Oh, excuse me, on that list from a few months ago. You know, uh, with no Michael Gallup, he's now gone. I think he's still a free agent, if I'm not mistaken. But Michael Gallup is gone. Cooks is, is there, but he's not. You know, their main guy, obviously, is CD. I think someone need to stay, need, need, needed to step up big time. Tobu, who I like a lot, I think from South Alabama a couple years ago, if I'm not mistaken. He's now, you know, going to his third or fourth year. It's time for him to shine. And a day like today really helps that out. Me, you know, so even if they lost uh, a pretty lopsided loss, they know they can count on him and he gets some some good touches and more touches because CeeDee Lamb will be as the year go goes on 
bracket coverage, double coverage, and stuff like that, or just off days in general, you're going to need Cooks and Tolbert to, to step up and take pressure off of CeeDee Lamb and also Dak Prescott. As far as the Cowboys defense goes, nothing too special. You know, nothing too special. Um, they did get home, what, once or twice, if not mistaken. Uh, one sack came from Chauncey Golson. I know, I know for sure when I seen that play. But Micah didn't do too much. You know, it did get an interception on, on Derek Carr in the game from Donovan Wilson. But so far, man, the defense looked like they might miss Dan Quinn a little bit. I know last week it didn't show that, uh, show that much. But this week it definitely showed there. Um, but o- overall, I still think once everything settles in, I think the Cowboys will still be a very good good team. My main thing is, and I say this still, they need to get a better running back. You know, that their running back room looking kind of scarce. You know, trade for Damian Pierce. Trade for, uh, you know, who else could be out there that could be tradable? I'm not quite sure right now. But Damian Pierce, to me, for the Texans, is prime candidate for, to be going to the Dallas Cowboys. And that, that move been, and shoot, that move been rumored since the summertime, you know, and some of a few months ago. But it's been like that for a while since the uh, the Texans got Joe, Joe Mixon as that star running back. I'm really loving the, the idea of, them going out to get Damian Pierce from the Texans, so we'll see if that happens. But if they get, if they make that move, I, and everybody else stays healthy around the Cowboys, obviously, I really am. You know, I really would feel the Cowboys a lot more. But as of right now, the fear just isn't quite there because the running game doesn't really, you know, scare me that much. Now going back to the defense of the Saints, as I said, their main, their mainstay. Even when they have had bad years or down years since the Drew Brees era, and even during the Drew Brees era, their defense has always been been good. Uh, led by Cam Jordan, today was no different. They had three sacks, uh, one, uh, one and a half by Carl Grandison, one, uh, excuse me, a half by Chase Young, and then one by Brian Breesy, a uh, former Clemson player who I like a whole lot. Uh, you know, he, he was one of my guys last year. He's one, one of my favorite rookies, and so far so good. Through, through two games, he's looking uh, pretty good, manning that D tackle spot for that Saints defensive line. Um, like I said, man, I'm not a I'm not a biased Falcons fan, but I will say I hope they don't bring their best game when they play us in a couple of weeks because these Saints are looking very scary, looking very good, and they are on point with what they're doing. So we'll see what happens. You know, oh, before we go, two picks. Uh, one from Paulson uh, Debo and one from the Honey, Honey Badger Tyran Matthew. Uh, as I said, these guys are ball hawks. Once once Marshawn Lattimore comes back, you get another ball hawk. You know, so that that's the thing that worries me because I came to the year saying I thought you no know, the Saints would struggle or at least not be as good, and they might trade Marshawn Lattimore to the Giants or to no excuse me not Giants to the Jaguars or to another team that needs a quarterback. Excuse me. Another team needs a cornerback, another, another another DB. But the way it's looking now, you know, Marshawn Lattimore, when he returns, will come back to a very good team, to a contending team. And that's the part that worries me being an NFC South, you know, participant with the Saints. So, you know, I, I had it as a, as a as a two-team race, my Falcons and the Buccaneers. But the Saints look like the best team as of right now. I think the Bucs are 2-0 as well. But from what we've seen so, so far through two games, the Saints like the best team in the NFL and definitely the best team in, in NFC South. So we'll see how everything shakes out. It's a long season, but so far so good for the Saints. Uh, we'll see what happens next week. I think the Saints have – let me see, I have the schedule right here. The Saints play the Eagles. Pretty good matchup, pretty tough matchup. Then they play my Falcons. Then they play the Chiefs. And then they then they, then they play the earlier mentioned Bucks. So tough four-game schedule. You know, and, and you would think five games with this Cowboys game prior to this game happening. But, you know, they handled the Cowboys with, with, with ease. So we'll see how they handle the next two teams, the Eagles and my Falcons, these next couple weeks. The Cowboys, their next two matchups, let me see here. They have the Ravens, who lost to the Raiders. So that is a winnable game. And then they have the Giants, who are struggling. And then they have the Steelers, who beat my Falcons. So we'll see if they can overcome uh, their next three games, their, their next three games. Uh, opponents so we'll definitely see there just off just off the uh first look at it i think they could go two and one easy be the giants being the steelers the ravens well Steelers see Steelers are tough because i will look them as a falcons fan and they beat us you know and their defense look look very good um if that pass rush tj white and alice heisman can can get home and 
get some going, then definitely is is a threat. But I think the Cowboys' offensive line could hold up. We'll have to see there. Um, but the Ravens, you know, they're an interesting matchup. We'll see next Sunday at 4.30. So uh, we'll see when the time comes. But as of right now, the Saints looking like the best team in the whole entire NFL. And for my Falcons, for my for our the, the division, if you're not a Saints fan, it's not a good thing to see. So that's it, guys. I'll see you guys next time. Have a great day.